Gambians gave their late President Michael Satter a befitting send-off. Several other African leaders joined Zambians in saying farewell to their hero. Michael Sata died in a London hospital after serving slightly over two-thirds of his term. He was 77. Sata's patriotic front party inherited a thriving economy with billions of dollars in its coffers. But after just three years, the country is more than $4 billion in debt. Government says it's spent wisely. New roads are being laid universities built, and other infrastructure upgraded. The economy has responded too, with record FDI inflows and growth in the mining, tourism, and agriculture sectors. Sata's populist policy saw government set higher minimum wages and also stop the removal of vendors from the streets. But there have been broken promises too. A new constitution was meant to be passed within 90 days of taking office. Three years down the line, the nation is still waiting, just like it's still waiting for more prosperity. There was a promise that there'll be money in your pockets. Uh, people are complaining that this money is not in the people's pockets. The shortcomings were compensated by Sata's political tolerance, surprising for a man who earned the moniker King Cobra on account of his sharp tongue. People who were in the MMD during the time he was in opposition, who criticized him seriously, who called him names. Uh, he embraced them and uh, even appointed them to his government. That itself, I think, uh, says something about uh, his commitment to public service, uh, his um, uh, view about inclusiveness, inclusive politics, uh, and looking at Zambia as a whole, that anyone who could contribute towards that uh, should, be, uh, should, be, should, be, should be given an opportunity. Michael Sata was a man of the people, and even now, as his people accompany him to his final resting place, they are not sure what the future holds for them without their man of action. Zambians go to the polls in 90 days and no one is sure if the patriotic front can cling to power. To do so, it will need to appease millions of unemployed youths who want to see more being done so they get a share of the economic cake. Zambia's uh, uh, financial market has not deepened to be able to create uh, uh, or empower Zambians to own the productive uh, uh, assets in the economy and as such will continue to look outwards. That is to international investors but they are likely to sit on the sidelines until there's a new government. Restive locals too will play the waiting game hoping whoever comes next can improve their lot. Farai Mwakutuya, CCTV, Lusaka, Zambia. Well, known as King Cobra to his admirers, Michael Sata leaves behind what some analysts describe as a mixed legacy. Michael Sata tried to be Zambia's president a record four times without giving up. So what lies ahead for Zambia post-Sata? CCTV's Farai Mwakutuya posed this question to Lee Habasomba, a political scientist and lecturer at the University of Lusaka. Um, thank you very much. So I suppose to begin with, um, President Michael Sata was called a man of action. Do you see someone within his party who is able, or who you think will be able, to fill the, those shoes and galvanize the party, number one, and carry the day for PF in the by-election? Well, I don't quite frankly see anybody that uh, fits the shoes of Michael Sutter. Michael Sutter was a man that could bend uh, from the man he was to the simplest man on the street. Michael Sata was a list elastic. He was a guy who could rise and speak to the professor and the political elite. And therefore, I don't seem to see uh, a person that quite fits uh, that profile. Uh, PF is almost in a crisis at this particular moment because uh, everybody within there thinks they can be president. But uh, presidential... Uh, job requires certain qualities and I do think that the tragedy they face is that they did not prepare 
uh, for this uh, kind of uh, tragic demise of, of the president. Although they knew that the president uh, was unwell, I think for some reason they did not think about the future. When this uh, by-election comes to pass, what will be the issues on the table? Well, I think the, the issues are simple. Uh, the ruling party will try and ride on the legacy of the late president. Uh, rural, road construction, electricity, and so on. But the opposition will be hitting out at the unfulfilled promises uh, that the PF made. Particularly, um, they promised a constitution within 90 days. It's now three years, and that constitution has not uh, come to fruition. Uh, they had promised that they would reduce uh, fuel prices, and the fuel prices are actually going the opposite way. They have gone up. Um, so I do think this may not necessarily be an election based on many of those things, but it's an election trying to determine what 2016 will look like. So in my take, I think that it is one where people will begin to look at who has got an agenda beyond 2016. And, and, and so you see that uh, political parties, whether in opposition or in the ruling party, are actually uh, creating um, certain kind of uh, strategic positioning uh, when they have been attending the funeral of the late president, the statements they have been making uh, during this period, they do indicate that each, each and every one of them is trying to build statesmanship around themselves. In your view, what should be the agenda come or beyond 2016? Well, I think for Zambians, uh, the agenda should be that Zambians must break from the old ways of doing things. Uh, certainly, the Constitution will be an issue that needs to be addressed. And also, I do think uh, the generational uh, uh, divide will play an important role in this election. There is, um, when you speak to people, or certainly during uh, the burial and all the ceremonies that happened, a lot of people spoke about the need for Zambia to continue to observe this legacy of peace, that it has this legacy of unity. Some people might say there is a real fear that things may get out of hand. In your view, are you worried about the future of this country? Keeping the peace and stability is dependent on the type of leadership that you have. And clearly, uh, the Patriotic Front, which is in power at the moment, uh, has shown signs of uh, a party that easily wants to get at each other over small differences. So the way they manage their succession process will determine by and large the peacefulness of the elections to come and the stability in Zambia. So it, we are at a critical moment where the choice of the PF candidate will determine whether the party will remain united or it is going to split the party therefore, therefore or thereby spreading this effect to the general population. Well, Zambia's succession battle has begun in earnest and likely to be in the race for the nomination in the ruling Patriotic Front is the current Defence Minister, Edgar Lungu. He has received the endorsement of 62 members of Parliament. Edgar Lungu was appointed acting president by Michael Sata while away in London where he died while undergoing treatment. He was fired and quickly reinstated by Deputy President Guy Scott. President Sata's son, Mulenga Sata, is also likely to feature in the PF's nominations. He is the current mayor of Lusaka. Zambia's Deputy Minister for Commerce and Trade, Miles Sampa, is also understood to be seeking the Patriotic France ticket to run for the presidency. And in the movement for multi-party democracy, the party's president, Nevers Mumba, has declared interest. Nevers Mumba served as vice president of Zambia between 2003 and 2004. He was also Zambia's High Commissioner to Canada from 2009 through to 2011. It is still unclear, but former President Rupia Banda may also make a comeback, according to reports.
Rupia Banda, who was Zambia's president between 2008 and 2011, is an alumni of Cambridge and Addis Ababa universities. He also previously served in various diplomatic postings for his country. Tilienji Kaunda, the son of Zambia's founding father, Kenneth Kaunda, has also announced his intention to fight for the presidency on a UNIP ticket. Now the race to succeed Michael Sata has begun to take shape with the battle for nomination intensifying within the ruling Patriotic Front. The opposition movement for multi-party democracy has also joined the fray. A host of other fringe parties are also expected to throw their hats in the ring. It is the nominees of these two leading parties, however, that are likely to face off in the upcoming presidential by-election as Zambians seek to replace their fallen leader. But first, let's take a break and when we return, our panelists will join us in discussing Zambia's transition and how it is likely to play out. Indeed, Zambia is in transition following the death of President Michael Sata. Well, joining us now to discuss Zambia after President Michael Sata from Lusaka, Mr. Nevers Mumba, the president of the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy in Johannesburg, Mr. Isaac Mfo Mogotzi, the founder and executive chairman of the Center for Economic Diplomacy in Africa. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us here on Talk Africa. Nevers Mumba, I'll start off with you in Lusaka, Zambia. Now, Zambians are to, the, are to go to the polls uh, next year. They are currently in transition They've called for a peaceful transition there in Lusaka and across the region. Are we likely to see a peaceful transition? What is it going to be like? Well, thank you so much, Beatrice, and to all our viewers. Um, yes, we just lost our president, and uh, we put him to rest on the 11th of this month. And uh, we are now in the transition uh, towards the by-election that is going to take place in the first part of next year. Um, Zambia has a history of uh, being a peaceful country over the past 50 years since we got our independence. So my expectation is that through this transition we are going to have a peaceful um, uh, transition in which we are going to reorganize ourselves in preparation for the election that is coming. All right. Uh, we've seen so that some jostling for position. Of course, uh, you are with the MMD party, but we've seen particularly from uh, the Patriotic Front, the ruling PF, we've seen some jostling there. Uh, should there be concern at all I in terms of what impact that may have on the stability of the country? Yes, any time that you have the ruling party not being cohesive or being agreeable as to how they wish to proceed, uh, there is an overspill uh, to the rest of the country. So our advice to our colleagues in the ruling party is to show restraint uh, in the manner in which they choose their uh, candidates. Is there any reason to worry uh, when we see the jostling for power? Firstly, it is normal that when you lose a president, everybody wants to give it a shot. Right. And that's what's happening in the ruling party. There was absolutely no succession program uh, prior to the death of the president. And so this whole thing is like everybody jostling for power. Our only prayer and hope is that once again we're going to depend on Zambia's culture of ensuring that peace prevails and that we make decisions that are in the interest of the nation. Uh, Mr. Bogotsi, you're watching this, of course, across uh, the, na uh, the, the, the border in uh, Johannesburg. Do you see this transition likely to be different? Because uh, in 2008, uh, Zambia went through another 
transition following the death of another president. Do you see any likelihood of this one being different? Uh, I think uh, from where we sit here in South Africa, we would broadly agree with uh, Mr. Mumba's uh, characterization of uh, the situation in Zambia. I think uh, we have an expectation that uh, the Zambians will be able to pull together and deliver another peaceful uh, election uh, through a peaceful, stable, democratic uh, process. So we don't uh, worry much, and we do understand the jostling for power within the ruling party. We've got our own experience here in South Africa, but we also have been able to pull uh, peaceful elections despite such a juggling, jostling for power within uh, the ruling party. All right, uh, Mr. Mumbar, of course, you're the president of the uh, MMD at the moment. Uh, in terms of the front runners, though, and in terms of uh, who the MMD is fronting, are you going to be one of the contesting candidates? Yes, um, I think that our constitution is extremely clear. Um, I am the president of the movement for multi-party democracy. And um, uh, according to our constitution, yes, I, I remain um, uh, the front runner if the election came and it has now come. Uh, we do, of course, have certain people that would like to run, uh, but they have to run, uh, they have to be advised along what the constitution stipulates. Uh, at the moment, we are looking at all the candidates that are in the different political parties, and I think we are well positioned uh, to proceed. You are well positioned to proceed, but the voter rejected the MMD in 2011. Uh, what are you going to be offering? What is the MMD going to be offering uh, the electorate this time around? Uh, we are very, very clear that uh, arising from the last government, uh, one, there are three things that we are offering the Zambian people. Firstly, we are offering Zambian people a moral uh, leadership of integrity that can handle the issues of state uh, with dignity and integrity and corruption free. That is number one. Number two, uh, the movement for multi-party democracy is offering uh, the uh, governance of true uh, responsibility in terms of the rule, uh, rule of law uh, to be observed in the, in the country, which we have not had in the first three years. Uh, we are going to ensure that the human rights are respected within right. the country. We are going to ensure that uh, the free media is perpetuated. And finally, uh, the economy, uh, that uh, we, we uh, operate on the free market economy that has raised the economy of this country to make it one of the test, 10 fastest growing economies in the world as a result of the policies of the movement for multi-party democracy. All so right. it's leadership, good governance, and also uh, an, a strong economy. And Mr. Mogotti, of course, uh, uh, President Sata was quite popular there in uh, Zambia. And of course, now this brings us back to his legacy or lack of it. What did you make of President Sata and his policies? I think, uh, generally speaking, the most important uh, lesson that uh, President uh, Sata delivered was that um, there could be a third new party in Zambia that uh, wins a free election other than uh, the previous UNIP and the multi-party movement for multi-party democracy, but also uh, part of the economic growth that uh, Mr. Mumba has just uh, referred to happened under his uh, presidency. But also Mr. Sata showed the wisdom in uh, changing some of his ideas that he held before he became president. You'd remember some of his more unfortunate and virulent anti-Chinese sentiments. But I think upon uh, assuming the presidency, he realized that real politics dictated that he adopted a different posture towards uh, China and uh, towards some of his uh, international remarks. It was also unfortunate that uh, during his presidency, presidency, his deputy president, uh, the current team president, uh, directed some of the most unfortunate statements towards South Africa, accusing South Africans of being backward. Right. And uh, our president, the president Jacob Zuma, of being arrogant. I think uh, there were certain challenges with his presidency, but uh, we look forward to uh, continuing brotherly relations with Zambia. All right. Uh, in, in terms of that economic stability, though, Mr. Mogotti, we've seen Zambia's economy, uh, you know, remain on average 7% their economic growth, though, partly uh, as well under uh, President uh, Michael Sata. Did you see his policies, particularly the pro-poor policies there that he campaigned upon? Did you see that working for the Zambian people? 
Our own experience here in South Africa is that uh, policies take time to effectuate, to bring about the desired uh, outcome. So we would not be particularly critical. I think uh, the Patriotic Front was not long in power from 2011. It would take much longer for the benefits of uh, a forward-looking uh, wise economic policy to to reach the poor across Zambia. But I think the fact that there was maintenance of um, galloping economic growth, uh, as Mr. Mumba was saying, uh, catapulting Zambia into among the group of 10 fastest growing economies in the world was also a tribute to him as it was uh, to a large extent to the previous president, um, um, Moana Wasa. So we are very hopeful that uh, as long as uh, the ship, the economic ship remains on course, Zambia will s be successful in the long run. All right. Uh, uh Mr. Momba, though, uh, that whole question of uh, economic growth, which is uh, part of what the MMD is also putting forward, I mean, uh, Zambia's economic growth at 7%, Zambia uh, hugely dependent on copper, the ninth biggest copper producer there in the world and the biggest in Africa, though. H how are you going to move Zambia forward, though, because, you know, the, the poverty is still quite high in the country? Yes, I, I think as the movement for multi-party democracy, our preoccupation was to ensure that we sustained um, uh, an economic growth that was going to translate into uh, the people at the bottom also benefiting uh, from uh, the economy, from the, the, the faster growth of our economy. Um, I think that, uh, like my colleague in South Africa has said, uh, this, the platform that we, send, uh, we set for my... Uh, uh, for the economy in our country is what sustained the patriotic front over the last past three years. And it will take a while before it goes down. But I think that uh, moving forward, our greatest preoccupation is to ensure that not only do we record good numbers in the GDP or uh, good numbers in the inflation rate or good numbers in the interest, low interest rates uh, for the small scale businesses, but also to make sure that the poorest of the poor have given an opportunity to participate in the wealth of our country, and in this case, copper. And so we are very, very uh, committed to ensuring that uh, the, uh, the copper prices uh, uh, continue to, uh, to contribute to improving the quality of life of ordinary Zambians. And I think that the economy is still robust, uh, it's still strong. We know that uh, in the next number of years, the damage that has been done by the patriotic front through the populist policies of uh, overspending and over borrowing from uh, international institutions is going to hit us maybe about three years from today. Uh, but I think that uh, um, over and above that, uh, the movement for multi-party democracy back in government is committed to stabilizing the economy once again right. and ensuring that the international community continues to participate in our economy. All right, Mr. Bogotsi, though, uh, I in terms of the succession debate and the, the issues that are dominating uh, the, the Zambian life today, what do you think, though, are some of the issues that Zambians are most concerned about today and some of the issues that will be, uh, you know, reflected during the election period? Well, uh, Beatrice, I think um, the most important factor to recognize is that uh, Zambia is a very strategic country within uh, our region, Sadak. It's uh, really the heart at the very center, bordering about uh, eight countries. So our interest in Zambia is uh, ongoing, it's uh, relentless. I think uh, the issues that would interest uh, Zambians from my point of view would be that uh, the transition is, as you indicated uh, at the outset of the program, program in your introductory remarks that it's uh, peaceful and that uh, there is uh, adherence to constitutionalism, that people respect the Zambian constitution uh, and that we avoid a situation where uh, decisions by the leadership, the executive are taken and only to be reversed under pressure. I think there has to be uh, an understanding that Zambia is going through a difficult uh, period. Uh, we are mourning the passing of President uh, Michael Sada and that uh, wisdom, sober decision making, and an assurance that uh, the hard fought for, hard won uh, stability in Zambia will continue to inspire us all in South Africa because Zambia is a very friendly, fraternal country to South Africans. Many of us were exiled in uh, Zambia when we fought against apartheid, and this uh, brother relation should continue. No situation of civil strife or instability will serve Zambians. No, we lead self uh, people of uh, Sadak in general.
Mr. Magotti, of course, the, the uh, Patriotic Front has been in power now for just over two years. What do you make of the strength of the Patriotic Front going into the election? And who do you see as the front runners, though, for the Patriotic Front? Uh, I think uh, from where I sit uh, and speaking frankly, I would say the election is for the Patriotic Front to, to lose. Unfortunately, some of the media reports that we are receiving about the infighting uh, do not augur well for a very successful campaign on the part of the Patriotic Front. I think they need to sort this matter of succession within the party speedily, publicly, and in a transparent manner. I think if they could do that, they are likely to benefit from uh, a sympathy vote um, in the wake of the passing on of uh, uh, President uh, Michael Sata. But I do concede also, as Mr. Mumba was saying, that uh, the movement for multi-party democracy is, uh, is a much older uh, movement. It has been in operation since 1991, so it is well established. It's uh, spread across Zambia. So uh, they, they also have um, a, a fire in the belly. They desire to go back into power. So I think uh, let the best party or the better party win. Uh, from where you're sitting, though, who do you see as the front runners for the Patriotic Front at this point? It's 50-50. Uh, if you just take um, the Patriotic Front and um, the movement for multi-party democracy, but uh, you've just indicated that the multi -party, uh, movement for multi-party democracy may not be uh, keen, uh, inclined to enter into coalition with other parties that may work against them. I mean, the more you have uh, parties around you, the stronger you naturally are in an election like this. So. We'll, we'll see. If, if that is taken into account, I would uh, give a slight edge to the patriotic front on account of a sympathy vote, really. All right, we'll leave it there for the moment, gentlemen, but I do thank you for being on Talk Africa today. Mr. Nevis Momba, the president of the movement for multi-party democracy. In Johannesburg is Mr. Isaac Mfomogotzi, the founder of ex and executive chairman of the Center for Economic Democracy in Africa, joining us there from Johannesburg. Gentlemen, thank you very much. I'm Beatrice Marshall in Nairobi. Goodbye. We're not going to have exactly Mr. Sata coming back. We pray that the next leader uh, go about the so-called continuity. Someone who's got a passion for the country, who wants a better Zambia. Yes, everyone can make promises. They can tell us economic policies and everything. But I want to feel it. It's better to have a dad who's at home than a rich dad who just talks and everything. Uh, I pray for the PF government to get organized. I think I want someone who has a vision like Sata, someone who's, who is a loving person. Someone who deliver, not just on paper. For me, as an individual, I want someone who has worked uh, very closely with uh, the late president so that uh, that person can continue from where he, he has left. So we are looking for that person who is going to carry on.